So, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever you are hearing us today. You are all welcome to the Factor and Tensors Analysis. Uh, today we'll be talking about factor differentiation. And from then we will look into, it's a very longer topic and very interesting and you will all enjoy it. And at the end of the day, we'll be able to differentiate the factor. We'll be able to use different metrics and um, that will lead us to another area. So we are going to be a bit uh, fast today. So let me, can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's move on. Factor differentiation. I believe when you hear the word differentiation, what comes to your mind? Anybody? Let's talk, please. Or you are hearing? Yeah, yeah. Yes. What comes to your mind? The Y, the X. Why the X, yes. <laughs> yeah, I know the Y, the X is the one that comes to your mind. Yes. Okay. Anyway, let's write. Uh, ordinary, ordinary derivative of factors ordinary derivative of factors. That is, let R of U be a factor, be a factor, depending on a single Scalar, depending on the single scalar variable, variable u, then then changing r over changing u. Is the same thing as R. We remember the plus change in U minus R of U all over change in U. You remember from our elementary differentiation when you have when you have this particular. So our change in R, we have our R into change in R, a uh, change in U rather, at the point of zero, and R of U, then your change in R is here. So which implies R U plus change in U minus R of U. minus R of U. I'm trying to lay emphasis on what we are doing. So we're changing U denotes. We're changing U denotes as increment. in U, it denotes increments in U. So then we can go ahead 
and write the R over the U is the same thing as the limit of changing U tends to zero. We have changing R over changing U equals to the limit changing U tends to zero. We have our R U plus changing U minus R of U. Everything over changing U. This is just a definition of if limit, if the limit exists, if the limit exists, if the limit exists, so this particular what we are talking about we occur. So we have different, we have a lot of definitions, but unfortunately, I'm not sure whether your material covers some things, but let's look at this. Where you have we have what we call space curve. If in particular, R of U is the position, is position factor Small of you joining the origin, origin O of a coordinate, coordinate system. And at the point X, Y, Z, then our R of U is equals to S of U, I plus Y of U, J. Of Z of U T. And specification of the factor function. So, what this one is telling us is telling us about specification of spectrum uh, of the factor function R of U. We define on the X, Y, X as function of U. But it, how do we go about it? It simply means that if limit exists, the our limit exists, what happened to this? Let's look at the way we put it. If the limit exists, change in R, small r, and change in U is equal to the R, the U exist, so we have the R, the U, is equal to DX, the U, I, please don't forget this definition, we will be using it, DY, the U, J, and plus DZ, the U, K. 
So that will lead us to the formula differentiation formula. Let's look at the differentiation formula in this case. Are we all there? differentiation formula. So we use different, because within these definitions, we have different definition for both ordinary differential equation and partial differ, uh, differential equation. So let's look at this. And in your exam too, they can ask you to prove them. I will just show you how to go about one or two. Then you can figure the rest. So uh, in this one, are we there, please? And in the response? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. If A, comma B, and C, and C are differentiable, are differentiable. Are differentiable factors are differentiable factors function a differentiable factor function of a scalar of a scalar u and on the phi is a differentiate is a differentiable scalar function of u then number one, we have d du of a plus b. How does it look like? It's the same thing as the a over the u plus the b over the u. Please take note of that. Number two, D du of A dot B is the same thing as A dot DB du plus B dot DA over DU. Please take note of that definition. Number three. D du of A cross B. Remember, I didn't call it times B. I said dot and cross. This is factor. Remember, we have A cross DB du plus the A du cross B. I think I need to put this one back. Let me put this one back to this place. Please change it to this place. So number four, when you have D, D, U, of a file A is going to be phi the A the U plus the phi the U A.
So number five, where we have D D U of A dot B cross C. The same thing as A dot B cross the C D U plus A dot the B, the U cross C plus the A, the U dot B cross C. So look at the definition. All these definition you will see when we are using them. Number six. DDU into A cross in bracket B cross C. So it's going to be A cross on the bracket B cross DC DU plus A cross DB, DU, cross C, plus the A, DU, cross B, cross C. So, these are the definitions we'll be working at as uh, we proceed. But before then, let's quickly check, since we are doing differentiation, let's see the definition, part of the definition, partial, when you are having a partial derivative, You have the partial derivative of a vector. So what happened at the partial derivative? When we have if A is a vector depending on more than one variable, more than one, more than one scalar variable. Say that we have uh, X, Y, Z. Remember, we only talk about one variable here, but when you now have more than one variable, what happened, for example, if you have a equals to a of s comma y comma z, what happens? The partial derivative of a with respect to x is defined as that a that x equals to limit s tends to zero. We have a into x plus changing x comma y comma z minus a into s y comma y comma z everything divided by changing x we all know changing s in this case is also like increment as we define it the other time if 
this limit exists. Similarly, the A, the Y, is the same thing as the limit change of Y tends to zero. A in brackets S comma Y plus change in Y comma Z minus A S comma Y comma Z. Everything divided by change in Y. So we do the last one same way. Remember, you have three variables. So don't be in A's when you're in the exam or in the test or whatever you're asked to do. Look at the variables you are given. If the variables are the same, please quickly adjust yourself. Is more than one or two, then you know that you should do the definition for them one after the other and try and take it gradually. So we can proceed. Now, what about if I have higher derivative? Uh, Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes. The partial derivative in change is Z. I think you wrote X, Y, Z plus, okay, you've changed it, sir. Thank you. Yeah, it's Z, thank you. So for higher derivative now, let's look at the higher derivative. So let's say we have the square A, the S squared. How do I do that? I have D, the X, in bracket the A, the X. That's how I do it. And if you have the square A, the Y squared, you do the same thing, D, the Y, into the A, the Y. Then the same thing happened to Z. equals to d z into the a the z but what about in the situation whereby i have two variables to compare with so if i have two variables this will be the square a the x, the y, how do I deal with that? It's very simple, same way. D, the x, in bracket, the a, the y. You can do the same thing for the others. You can do it for this one, d square a, the y, the x, So the square is the y, the x will just be d dy in brackets the a the x. So we can proceed on that level. Although you can have this. It's possible, you can do it this way. So, but the same law, the rule of partial derivative also apply in this case. Like we did the other time, 
The rule of partial derivative also apply here. Uh, okay, let me let me quickly give us because I've seen questions acting about this rule. Partial differential. Partial differentiation, rather. Of factor. So number one rule says d dx of a dot b d dx of a dot b is the same thing as a dot d b dx plus the a dx dot b. So number two, d dx we have a cross b will be a cross the b the x plus the a the a the x cross b. Any question, please? So, before we go to the example, or how to prove some of them, one, I'll just put one and that. Number three says, the square the y the x a dot b equals to d dy into d dx a dot b is equals to d dy into a dot db dx plus da dx dot b. So at the end of the day, if you can have all this, so we implies that our a dot d square b dy dx plus the a dy dot db dx plus the a the x the a the x dot the b the y plus the square a the x at uh, the y the x dot b it is and so on and so forth. Well, let's look at the example. 
so that in all these definitions we make more sense. I'm just giving us the definition so far, but let's look at example. Example one. He said, if R u R of u equals to x of u i plus y of u j plus z of u k. Where s comma y comma z a differentiable function and z a differentiable a differentiable function of a scalar of a scalar u proof that the R the U is equals to the X the U I plus the Y the U J plus the Z the U K. So how do we prove this? Down. Remember our solution the other time? Remember we have, now to solve this problem, we have the R, the T equals to limit change in U tends to zero, where your R is defined as change in U, minus change in u over change in u. And I know my u from up here, the definition of r u is s u i y u g. So I can substitute it. I can use it there. Since I know the u here, so let's look at the way we solve it, one after the other, which implies that our limits change in u tends to zero. We have x in bracket u plus change in u, i plus y into u plus change in u, J plus Z into Z into U plus changing U K. Minus, don't forget, you have to take, this is what we first of us solve, then minus this, minus this one, minus x of u i, don't forget, plus y of u j, plus z of u k. Are we together, please? Hello? We are together, sir. Okay. Now that we're together, we can now solve this problem. We can say divided by changing u. Then we can now split the limit one after the other. Please, Ebony.
So from the first principle, we remember the law of first principle, the way we normally solve it in, the, in the elementary calculus. So we can now solve this one. By substituting it, you can begin to match. Let you go, let the X goes to X, let Y go to Y. It's very simple. So let's look at it. Component by component. Remember the law. Component by component. So our limit is still remain constant. So we can now take X into U plus change the U minus X of U divided by changing U. Everything I. Plus Y into X plus Y into U plus changing U minus Y of U all divided by change is u. j, then plus z of u plus change in u minus z of u all over change in u t. But don't forget the definition of each of them. You agree with me that, let's assume that this is the brackets with this bracket, put the bracket there. Because each of them, each component, the limits belong to each of the components. So that you will see it as if it's only egg that have the component, that have the limit. Now let's look at this limit from here. Look at this definition here. Let me go back a bit. Sorry to bother you guys. It's there in your notes. Now, look at this limit. At this point, if the limit exists, we, ask, we just discuss it. Just hold on a minute. So you can see that the definition of the limit shows that it exists from here. We know that, look at it. Please, let's check this one. The RDU is equal to the limit, the entire limit, this one. So we are using the same thing to define this one too. We are using the same definition for that. So that is why I said all these definitions, they are very important because by the time we are working or you are working on a particular problem, all these definition will save your head. So now let's do it this way. For the clarification, the limit changing U tends to zero. Right? I can just put it this way. S of U plus change in U minus S of U over change in U, I plus limit change in U, Y, U plus change in U minus U over change in U, J. Then our limit change in U tends to zero. Where you have Z of U plus change in U minus Z 
of you in the UK. So I can go ahead and say that, therefore, or which implies that the X I over the U plus the Y the U J plus the Z the U K. So any, any question, please. Silence means no question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any question, please? Silence means no question, right? Should I proceed? I should not proceed. Please unmute yourself and talk. Proceed, sir. Okay. Okay, let's look at another example. Now that you know how to prove it, if you want to prove as many, you can go ahead and do that. So number two, let's look at a, another example. Given R equals to sine Ti plus cos T J plus TK, find A, the R, the T, B, the square R, the T squared, C, absolute value of the R, or magnitude value of the R, the T. So you have to be careful when you see question like this. So So let's look at the let's solve this one. Solution The R the T will be the T of sine T I plus D the T of 
equals t j plus d dt of t k. So now let's solve it. When you differentiate sign, what do you have? Yeah, of course, sir. You have cos, yes. Cos t, i. When you differentiate cos, what do you have? Minus sign. Minus sign t, j, then cos. When you differentiate t, what do you have in this case? Z zero, right? No. Remember, what? t is a, you are differentiating with respect to function t. It's supposed to be what? One. You know, when you differentiate x with respect to x, what do you have? You have one. In this case, t is not a constant. Is that OK? You can only treat this one as a constant if it is four or figure. So you have k. Because one is the answer. You, you have one. When you differentiate, you have of one. So at the end of the day, our final answer is cos t i minus sine t j plus k. So that is it. So let's look at the b. The B says the square R, the T, the T squared, is the same thing as D dt of the R dt. D dt bracket the R dt. So which means we already have, don't forget the R is here, so you don't need to do it again. So all you need to do is just to put D dt of cos T I minus D dt of sine T J plus d dt of one k so when you differentiate cos t what do you have I need of, um, you need what t. you're going to have minus sign minus sign t t i well when you differentiate sine t, what do you have? Plus cos. Cos t. Remember, there is a minus in between. The negative sign will still be there. Then when you differentiate this, you have plus 0k. There's nothing. So at the end of the day, you have minus sine t minus cos t. So you can proceed. Our C said, sorry, okay, how many questions? Oh, he has a D, sorry. D says the square R, the T squared is the same. So let's take note of that, the last one. So we, in C now, C says, the R, the T, which is the same thing as, remember the definition of magnitude. So take note of that. So we can now say it, square root of, we know the R, the T, we pick the R, the T and take the square of each of them. Cos T squared, plus minus sine t 
squared plus one squared. So at the end of the day, you have, what do you have here? You have cos squared t plus sine squared t plus one. Remember the definition that says cos squared t plus sine squared t is equals to one. Therefore, our final answer here, you must remember all this definition is very key. It's going to be square root of two. That is what they ask us to do. So now let's look at the C, our D. D says the square R dt squared is the same thing as the square root of, remember we have the definition of the square. This is the square r, the t squared. So we can go ahead and solve this problem by saying minus sine square, sorry, minus sine t squared, plus minus cos t squared, which is the same thing as sine squared t plus cos squared, which is equal to one. Any question, please. Sorry, sir. Is, is it one or is it just one, one, sir? Square root of one. One. Root one is one. Square one, root of sir. one is what? Is one. Aha. It's better you put it there for, for explanation's sake. So you will see a lot of questions in this manner in your, in your, in your stuff, but let's look at this question. Second. And I will advise you now that majority of you have access to the previous past question, uh, the, the past question, take advantage of what we are doing in class. Use it to solve as many as possible on your own. Don't wait till the one professor will come and solve it for you. I will not do that. I will only solve, I will only give you what you need to solve them. So take your time and do it. Remember, you are doing paper and uh, pencil the exam. And this is not the time you'll be doing uh, is this your first time you are doing you are doing it? No, sir. This is your first time. No, sir. Okay, good. So this is not the first time that will be helpful. How many of us are doing this course for the first time? Raise up your hands on the chat. This is your first time you are doing it. Yes, Joshua. We again. Okay. My first time. Okay, Lazarus. Okay, as that. How many of us are doing the second time? If you are doing it second time, raise up your hand, please. Okay. Chibuzo. Can you unmute yourself? Okay, yes, sir. Are you doing it second time? 
If this is actually the first time I'm going to write it. I, I registered it last, last semester, but I didn't write it. Oh, okay. Yes. Because you did not come to class. Yes, sir. I didn't ah. understand it then. So I did that. You didn't understand? Yes, I didn't understand because I didn't attend any of the classes. So. Oh, you didn't yeah. understand the way it, uh, the facilitation is being operated? Yes, that was my first time when I came to the right entry, so I didn't understand many things. Oh, okay. okay, let's write this question then. A particle, a particle moves along a curve. Whose parametry equation are x equals to exponential of t, y equals to 2 cos 3t, and z equals to 2 psi. 3t. Where t is the time. But A says determine its velocity and acceleration. At any time, B, find the magnitude. So we're still writing the question, so if you can help us lower it a little, sir. Okay. Is it okay like that? Okay, it's okay, sir. It's okay. Find, like that, sir. find the magnitude of the velocity and acceleration at t equals to zero. At t equals to zero. So what does it mean? Can I proceed, please? Can we yes, proceed? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So what does it mean? The solution says, the position the position factor are of the velocity uh, okay uh, of the particle rather sorry of the particle is R equals to X I. Remember this R plus Y J plus Z K. You remember the definition. So it simply means that, and I know my 
X, I know my Y, and I know my Z. So I will just substitute them. So it's going to be R equals to exponential minus T I plus two cos three T J plus two sine three T K. Then the velocity is V equals to the R dt, which is the same thing as D dt of each of the components. plus d dt two cos three t j plus d dt two sin three t k so if you don't go in differentiation, you, it's better you go and revise those books on your calculus. So we have minus, if you, if you differentiate exponential minus t, it's gonna be minus exponential minus t. Do you agree with me? 100% sir. Yes, sir. So when you differentiate 2 cos 3t, remember when you differentiate cos, you have negative. So you first of all write that negative. And I know I have my 2 here. It's going to be what? With what is there, 3 sine 3t. Do we agree? J. Then when you differentiate sign, you have cos. It's going to be plus. This will be what? You have your two again in bracket three cos three t k. So in at the end of the day, you have it to be minus exponential minus t j i minus six sine thirty three t j plus six cos three t Any question? Any question? Silence means no question. Then we proceed to calculate our acceleration. And the acceleration is a equals to d square r, the r squared, the t squared rather, is equals to exponential minus t minus t i So you remember, I'm differentiating it already. Or do I need to explain sir, this one? Sir, sorry, so are you redifferentiating the answer? We got yes. the under velocity. Exactly. Remember, okay, I need to do something here. Let me 
help here. The R, the T is equals to this. So when you are now differentiating it again, what happened? Remember, you have, let me, because of people that will still watch the video, we have uh, minus, in bracket minus exponential, minus t. All right. Do you agree with me now? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. We have minus. If I differentiate sign, what do I have? You have, um, co uh, you have cos. You have cos. So minus, don't forget, you have 6 out there. 3 cos 3t three j. Then we have plus 6 in bracket minus 3 sine 3t three k. So at the end of the day, our a, which is equals to acceleration, the square r, the t squared will be minus times minus plus. We have e minus t, i, and this is minus 18 cos 3t, j, minus 18 sine 3t, k. Any question? Remember the question we are given. The question says we should calculate, we should solve A, that. which is velocity and acceleration. This is how the question will look like in your exam too. Determine its velocity and acceleration at any time. So the second question now says, find the magnitude of the velocity and the acceleration. So for us to find the magnitude, so what do I need to do? B, I need to add T equals to zero. The R, the T is equals to what? So let's go to the R. Substitute zero here, the half. You have exponential, zero is what? Please talk. Anybody? No idea. Exponential zero is one, and we have negative one i. Then what do we have here? When you put zero here, size zero is zero. So everything here will vanish. But cause zero is one, which is plus zero j plus six t. So we have the r, the t to be equals to negative i plus c k. Please take note of that. So you do the same thing as for the acceleration to the square r, the t squared will be, remember we consider as t equals to zero now, because we need to bring everything back to component function. All the element of T has to be disappear because we are considering it as at time T equals to zero, initial condition, initial T. So the first one would be I plus, if you put for the J, you have negative AT J plus zero K. So at the end of the day, I have the square R, the T squared 
to be equals to I minus 18J. Any question? Then we can proceed. So now find our magnitude. The magnitude of velocity at t equals to zero is, don't forget our magnitude, you have negative one squared plus six squared, which is equals to square root 37. Calculate the magnitude also of acceleration at t equals to zero is what? Square root of one squared plus negative 18 squared equals to square root of 325. You can check if you can break it down further, then that will help us. But the sand is square root of this particular one. Any question? Yes, Chibuzo. What was the question? No. Okay. I didn't know. Are we tired? Uzeni, Uzeni, are we tired? No, you said we can still break it down. Well, yeah. we are with you, sir. Okay. I'm not going to do that for you. Square root of 325, you can punch your calculator and get your... Yes, sir. Well, can we still break it down to like 5 foot 13? Yes, it's possible. That's why I said you can break it down to anything you like. You said square root of 5. That means you have 25 times 13, right? Yeah, 25 times 13. So, which is 5 root 13. That would be fine. Sorry. Okay. Let me quickly prove this. Uh, let's say question four. If A and B are differentiable, are differentiable function. Of a scalar. of a scalar u, prove that, proof. How many of you have seen this type of question? A, I'll just solve this one. D d u into a dot b equals to a dot d b d u plus d a d u Does B we have B two, which is a cross we have B. Let me quickly prove them G D U of A cross B. Well, a cross B is going to be A cross DB, DU, plus the A, DU, plus B. So let's solve this one before we call it a day. So 
solution. So let's A equals to A1I plus A2J plus A3K and B equals to B1I plus B2J plus B3 K. So we now have it this way. We have D D U into A dot B. We now have D D U into remember A dot B. That means component by component. So it's going to be A1, B1, plus A2, B2, plus A3, B3. Then if I'm differentiating A, I'll, if I'm differentiating B, I'll be holding A constant. That is the meaning. So it's going to be, Let's just listen. You differentiate B first and hold A constant, and you, later you differentiate A, you hold B constant. So it's like it's a product product the way we normally do the product product in the differentiation. So it's going to be A1 DB1 DU plus A2 the B2 du plus A3 the B3 du. Remember that's the first phase plus B1. Now we owe the B1. We take the B1 to the other side. Since I'm differentiating A now, it's going to be the B, the A1 the U B1 plus the A2 the U B2 plus the A3 B U the U B3. So in this case now, I can factorize, don't forget my initially, I said B, I said B equals to B1, B2, B3. So I know B is equals to this. A1 is also equals to this. I can say, therefore, A dot dB du plus the A, the U, B is equals to the U, the, the U of A dot B. Any question? Any question? So please, can you go over the conclusion part again? Okay. Now, listen, let's go back to the definition. Do you agree with this definition? You agree with this one? Yes, sir. That the entire system is A? Yes, sir. That the entire system of this one is also B? Now, I know from here, I have A1, A2, A3, which is the same thing as A. A, yes, sir. Yes, Dot. You know, it's a dot that is in between them, which is multiplication sign. And I know I have the B1, the B2, the B3, which is also B. So I just say, okay, based on what I've this, uh, declared up, A dot B, A dot, every A1, all the A1, A2, A3, they are equals to my A dot, Every B1, B2, B3, they are equals to my B dot equals 
everything will that be a dot okay. the b the u any question yes, i get it sir. now the same thing applicable to b to the other side a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 they are a and b so that's all any question please okay now let's do the same thing to cross for the cross it's a it's another drama on its own d d u of a cross b remember d d u is the same thing as i a1 b1 a2 b2 and uh, oh, the next one is j and for this k A3, B3. Using the theorem of differentiation of the determinants, don't forget. Using the theorem, write it down. Using a theorem on differentiation. of a determinant of determinant. This become I, A1, J, A2, K, A3, the B1, the B2, and D, B3, so all you need to do is just a simple thing, the way we do the crossing the other time, that is how we are going to do it. So it becomes this plus I the A one the U B one J the A two the U B2, K, the A3, the U, B4, B3, brother. So, remember the definition of this using the that theorem. it will surely lead us to A cross B, cross the U, the B, and the U, the So how do we solve it using this theorem? Initially, if you check the definition of A cross B, 
What does it give us? Anybody? Sorry, sir. Can you say again, sir? So what does this one give us? Okay, I, what I'm saying is this. Is equals to A plus the B, the U, plus the A, the U, cross B. So I'm talking about which is equals to D, the T of A plus B. So, but the question now is, how do we solve this one? Let's solve this first matrix and see what we get. The first matrix will give us this. I, if I'm dealing with I, you remember the way we discuss it. Let's say we pick I now. If I pick I region, everything in I region will be paralyzed. All this will paralyze. This will also paralyze. It will remain what? A2, A3, the B1, the B2, over the U, then the B3 over the U. Since we are using the theorem of this, we have A1 minus J, A1 and A3, the B1 over the U, the Hello, B3, sir. yes, over the U. Some, some of us were locked out because of a uh, network issue. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. I don't, can you see my screen again? Yes, I'm seeing the screen, but uh, this, uh, the place I stopped, where you wrote uh, A1, A2, A3, then for, for I, J, and K, then uh, the B1 all over the U, the B2, the U, the B3, that was where I stopped, sir. Okay, let's go back. Is it this place? Yes, sir. Okay, can you quickly copy it? Yes, sir. Copy it because I have another class. <laughs> Even I supposed to finish your class eleven that in the with more than one. I supposed to finish your class in four. Now this is to five, right? So yes, sir. Uh, and I have another class by five. We also have class uh, physics. So which one is to pass? Okay, please, let's continue, sir. Please, sir, let's continue. Don't, don't worry, I will stop now, since you also have a class. We don't have any class after now. We don't have. Oh, we have class now. If you don't have, we, oh, we have physics. Which what physics? Where's the course code? Where's the course code, please? Where's the course code? For the physics? Yes, sir. I think it is 303. Not three now. We are not even on the WhatsApp group. I will chat to you, please. Drop your number. All right. Okay. So to the next page, please. Please, I need to know the time for that. Please, three o three, please. We are not having any class after to, after this one, sir. Please, we can continue, sir. Whether you have or not, I'll finish this question. Then call it a day. And uh, you guys will sort yourself out in your own <laughs> class. Remember, I told I have another class, and the student will also be waiting for me. Do you normally have class in the morning? No. Yeah, the only one we have every Saturday. No any other lectures on Saturday except your course. Sir. Oh, okay. If that is the case, I will see what we can do. Probably we can bring it earlier. Anytime we want to meet earlier, I will let you know. Okay, sir. Okay, I will sir. tell you on the platform. If you are not on WhatsApp group, you will just miss the class. Probably next class, we might start by probably 2 o'clock. Okay, sir. 
So if anything we do, because we have a lot to learn, but let's continue. So in this case, now when you cross, when you multiply this one, what do you have? Our I, we have I into, this will multiply this, sorry. This will multiply this, and this will mother this. So we have A2, the B3, the U minus A3, the B2, the U. So minus J. which is A1, the B3, the U, minus A3, the B1, the U, plus K, plus K into A1, the B2, the U, minus A2, the B1, the U. So that is what the definition is telling us. So at the end of the day, by the time you match everything together, you will discover that you have something in this nature. When you open the brackets, you will see what it means to be in this form. So on this note, I'll call it a day, but let me, can we stop, can I stop sharing? Have you, are you still copying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're still coming. The last part of this, sir. Okay. So, if you look at this one now, by the time you have real question that we are moving on to, you'll be able to prove further and to be able to solve, have the solution to some of those problems that you might be facing in your own or study. So by next class, I will give us some example. Don't miss the next class. By God's grace, we'll be able to do some of those stuff. And you yourself will be able to see where it's applicable, how it's applicable. Then so how, do, how do we solve this equation answer? We got to do it, sir. If you have to do it, I just explain this one to you now. Look at this. From here now. Okay. Remember, you are given this to prove. You are given, we are asked to prove this one now. And I know the UDT, uh, DDU, multiply by everything here, we surely give me, using the theorem uh, of the determinant, I will have something similar. Remember, you only have A and B, so you can't have more than these two metrics. The first time is A1, A2, A3. And the second row is the B1, the B2, the B3. Then differentiate the way we did the other time when we do the product product. <sighs> differentiate a you you owe at this point that we owe a constant, right? And we differentiate b. The second one we differentiate a we owe b constant. That is what we did. 
That is why at the end of the day, we are able to say that our A, everything here is A cross the B, the U. And we are just using this one to explain that is still A, remember we are holding A constant. Anywhere you see A1, A2, A3, they are all A. Anywhere you see the B1, the B2, the B3, they are all differentiation of the B. That is what the definition is telling us. Have I answered your question? So what I did here now, I only saw for when A is constant. Hello? Nobody's there. Okay. So, uh, it's the kind of... You see okay. what I did? I've not finished this question. That's what I'm okay. telling you. Okay. I only solve these parts. I only solve this one. So you can complete it by solving this one. Add the two together, you will get this. You will surely arrive at this one. Look at this now. I only did matrix for A1, uh, for the first one, when A yes. is constant. So when you want okay. to do this one now, this one will be, you will use now against this. So by okay. the time you do, this is what I did. So if I want to do the second one now, look at it. Plus, now let's, I won't solve it anyway. I can only explain one to you. I, what is I in this case? If I pick I, my uh, I, everything here will paralyze, everything will paralyze. I only have this multiplied by this and this multiplied by this. Right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so it's going to be the A2, the U multiplied by B3. It's going to be the A2, the U, B3 minus. I only solve just, I just solve one. No? Okay, sir. Minus the A3. Minus the A3, the U. B what? B2. Yes, sir. So, are we together now? Yes, sir. Then minus J, you continue like that. Yes. And it will be the, the A1, the U, minus B3. Yeah, that's just it. Then minus the A3, the U, minus B1. Anyhow, just make sure you complete it. Uh, <laughs> 